Hey guys, Andrew Lee here with Health Mutual Network and your admin over at the California Insurance Agents Group. And I just wanted to make a quick video about the art of the close, the ethos of closing, the perspective, the psychology of closing from the voice of a health insurance agent that's been doing this for a while. So, <laughs> um, of course, closing is going to be one of those things that we have to be great at. Obviously, you know, we're in sales and closing is one of the the biggest tools that we have um, as insurance agents to do well, to make money, to help out, to get our message across and ultimately to get people on board with our message and, you know, have them be advocates for us. So I would say, you know, before anything, even before building a rapport with the customer i would say marketing or sorry i would say <laughs> you already know what i'm gonna say i would say closing starts at marketing right what type of lead is it right is it uh, an internet lead is it um a person that you met you know at a booth somewhere is it just from a networking event is it a you know a referral partner is it another you know whatever it is you know wherever you got that lead from will dictate how easy that close will be right because with certain situations if you already know this person if their referral from somebody that they really trust and you know or your reputation from your branding precedes you and they already know who you are because your branding is so so strong you know that's already going to help with the close right so i just wanted to preface this with you know have some good marketing because it's only going to make your closing better i know that statement sounds obvious but if you really think about uh, think about it you know retroactively and you know how back we have to go to get the yes from a client i think marketing and the type of lead it is and where we got that lead from really really establishes sort of the um, um establishes the roots of you know how we can close uh, a deal so you know, of course, the lead is going to matter. After that, of course, you know, if you're on the phone with somebody, if you're if you're meeting them face to face, you know, of course, you're going to want to build rapport. Hey, Joe, nice seeing you. You can talk about the weather, you can talk about whatever, just put something in there and make it sound like it's your voice, right? So building rapport is going to be establishing a positive relationship with the client, right? Which is extremely crucial. A lot of, you know, salespeople, we, we have to do our best to, especially if we're on the phone, do our best to get their attention in the first three seconds, the first two and a half seconds, right? Um, and if, you know, if you're in person, you know, it's our job to be attentive, you know, friendly, empathetic, really create a connection and, you know, something that's going to garner trust and foster some kind of relationship um, and, you know, make the other person feel comfortable is all building rapport, right? Hey, if, if you got a lead coming in over the phone, hey, Joe, um, hey, great seeing you. I know the weather's been crazy lately. You know, it's just been so hot or so cold. And, you know, hopefully that's not really holding you back from what you want to do today. And hopefully you're having a great one. So, and then you get into whatever you need to get into. Or, you know, if it's uh, some kind of lead where, you know, you had a situation where, you know, you, you referred maybe, or, you know, you met them, you know, on, you know, at a booth or physic, you know, a face to face, then you would just let them know, hey, um, yeah, good seeing you again. And, you know, um, yeah, it was good. The last time when we when we did X, Y and Z, when, you know, we went out to go and, you know, I think that was a great event. And um, yeah, I was just glad to see you there, to be honest. And um, I know that you're reaching out to me for some assistance with with your health insurance, and I'd be happy to help just sort of something like that. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to be too fancy. Um, I just really just made that up right now. You know, just make sure you're, you know, the tonality is very um you know, welcoming and trusting and, and friendly so that, you know, they're ready to open up about, you know, whatever they need to open up about to make your job easier. So you can, you know, ask these um, fact finding questions. So, um, you know, ultimately, what that's going to lead to is active listening, because you're going to start asking, you know, all of these questions, you're going to ask all of you know, these fact finding questions. Hey, how long have you had your policy for? Hey, what are you missing in your policy that you don't have right now? You know, some of these key questions you want to ask. And then after that, what do we do? We're silent, right? We're quiet. 
we're listening, okay? So we're understanding the customer's needs, anything that's vital to them, you know, and making sure that we can at that time effectively position our pitch correctly so that, you know, when it's our time to talk, we can actually give value instead of just blowing hot air and just not really talking about anything. You know, sometimes people that are new and sometimes people that, you know, just don't have the awareness yet about, you know, how a sales process goes, you know, really sort of mess up during the time when they're trying to like really, you know, butt in and, you know, talk over the other person when you're actively supposed to be listening um, to something that they're going to say. And then, you know, that's like, oh, cool. That's what they need. And that specific uh, thing is their problem. And now we can pinpoint that and let's find a solution to that. So um, by actively listening, you're going to you're going to understand objections. You know, again, us uh, us salespeople, us uh, agents, I mean, we have to understand objections, right? It's part of our job. I mean, we have to be problem solvers, right? The best problem solvers that are the most creative with that uh, with that solution wins, you know, nine out of 10 wins, right? Just somebody that's just two steps ahead, you know, really understanding what is going on with this person that they're trying to help. You know, those are the people that really do good in sales, obviously, right? And what happens the ratio to closing, you know, gets better, right? That that gap starts narrowing as to them saying no to them gravitating towards a yes. So, of course, you know, understanding what they're saying and uh, understanding their objections, you know, you're, you, you want to anticipate, you know, them having some objections. So that's why you're listening and make sure that you have all these well-crafted responses so that you can go ahead and just dominate those objections, right? Um Another thing, of course, we have to talk about is, you know, the benefits, right? And that's sort of the the X's and O's, the boring part, um, but it's the features, right? And, you know, the client, of course, has to know about features. Our job is to emphasize the benefits, right? Emphasize the benefits and the service, right? I would emphasize the service and, of course, the product if it, you know, if, if they did say something about, Hey, Andrew, I did need XYZ medication. Um, you know, that definitely is something that I, I'm interested in and I definitely want a good price on that. Then you emphasize the benefit of, you know, the the product, that, that specific product um, and how that's going to, you know, empower their lives and or how it's going to, you know, be at a pretty good rate so you can have some peace of mind. Anything like that, you know, of course, is going to help out. Um, but of course, you definitely want to highlight yourself too, um, as the agent, not being all you know egotistical and saying I'm the best, I'm number one, but just sort of saying, hey, you know, I got your back. You know, I'm I'm a shoulder to cry on if something happens. I am the person to call. I am, you know, you're everything, right? So you also have to sell yourself too. So you know, rather than just the features, right? You definitely want to put yourself in a position where you know the features are great and all, but you know, you're there too as well. Um, of course, once you go over all of that, all of the features, then, you know, we want to do some kind of trial close, right? Now, trial closes, if you guys don't know what it is, is, you know, throughout the conversation, you know, we're definitely going to have some kind of pre-close, like a trial close, just to sort of gauge the temperature on, you know, where they're at, where, where their thought process is at in, in this whole, you know, in, in the conversation that we're having. So throughout the sales conversation, you know, you definitely want to use some trial closes to sort of gauge the customer's readiness to buy or their eagerness to, to or their interest to, to, to get something or to, to at the very least work with you. And, you know, these are in the form of, you know, questions, you know, um, how uh, does everything sound good with that? You know, if you're doing, let's say, a Medicare, you know, plan, plan G or something like that, like a supplemental policy or something like that or, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, you definitely you can you can do a trial close saying, hey, you know, I don't even know if you can qualify for this um, via underwriting or via I don't even know if you qualify for subsidies if you're doing, you know, under 65 health through the marketplace. I don't even know if you qualify for that, right? Let me go ahead and first check to see if you do, right? 
you know, so a trial close for a, let's say a Medicare supplement would be, hey, you know, I don't even know if you're going to pass underwriting, but let's go ahead and submit the application just to see that, you know, you'll, you'll pass the underwriting. So with that, with, with that in mind, um, would you be okay with us going at the very least checking if you qualify for this um, so that we're not, we don't have to waste time if for any reason you don't pass underwriting, um, then at that point we can, you know, have a plan B and, and get you on another plan. Um, I just, I just need to make sure that you qualify for this and uh, make sure that we're doing this, um, you know, we're, we're putting out due diligence in and we're, we're doing this as fast as we can for you uh, to see if you qualify, you know, how's that sound, you know, something like that. Again, I just made that up, but you know, that that's definitely a pre-close meaning, you know, you know, an average salesperson would just say, Hey, um, yeah, you do have to qualify for this. Um, but yeah, that's just based off of your health. And then just nothing after that, right? Like you definitely have to have a call to action, ask a question at the end so that, you know, they know that this is, um, you, you know, an action, a call to action, as opposed to just, um, you know, Hey, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I know I can enroll or you can enroll and, yeah, and I'm just giving you the option to enroll. It's like, no, we have to take some action. We have to first see if you qualify. So um, a lot of people don't do trial closes, and, and it's okay if you don't because some people can get through uh, the whole um, conversation without any trial closes, but it just, it just you know, it, it gives you that barometer of like, hey, is this client really, you know, are these are there additional questions? Is this even a sale? You know, is this even a, a person that's, you know, qualify, you know, like just that kind of stuff, you know, all comes out during the trial close, right? So if you guys aren't doing that, then, you know, make sure you, you, you put that into your arsenal because, you know, trial closes are very, very strong to get a soft yes before the actual yes is a good sign, right? Now on that topic, um, we're definitely going to also want to create a sense of urgency. Guys, if you guys don't know how to do this, this is going to be actually one of your best friends right besides the trial close right now the trial close and the creating a certain sense of urgency are going to be two of the things or two of the, the i guess not tactics but two of the the ways that we can sort of gauge and we can sort of you know you know push the envelope on hey are we a good fit for each other are we actually going to do this or not right and you do that by creating a sense of urgency right if you know, there's a deadline coming up for whatever, you know, application they need to submit. You know, let's say if it's the end of AEP or the end of open enrollment or the end, whatever it is, you definitely want to create some kind of urgency saying, hey, OK, so we only have four more days to apply for this. We're sort of on our last leg here. So I just wanted to let you know that. But I will work fast for you so I can get you your quote. So you're working fast. And what's a client going to do? They're going to work fast with you because there's a sense of urgency. Urgency can be a powerful, uh, powerful motivator, right? Salespeople are always going to use these limited time offers, always these special deals. And, you know, I would even say maybe scarcity tactics to encourage customers to make a prompt decision. And this is going to be extremely important. Just make sure that you do it in your own voice. Make sure it's not too aggressive. Make sure that it's an actual reason as to why they need to do this urgently right instead of just pushing something and saying oh you got to do this now because something you just made up right has to make sense for the client has to has to have some kind of logic behind it so creating urgency is going to be one of the biggest things and you know handling objections right you're going to get objections and what you, what you have to do is you have to be a swan you have to handle these with grace it has to be gracefully done right when an objection arises you know of course what you're going to do is say some kind of positive word yes okay you know i wouldn't say great or perfect i, I know there's like a science behind um those words not being um i forgot what study it was but it, it was something uh, along the lines of um those words are too um, positive or too like eager that the customer sort of like backs off a little bit. So I refrain from saying great or perfect, um, you know, yes, or like, okay, let's get this done, right? Or yes, and that sounds good. And, um, you know, of course, uh, handling the objection is going to be, you know, sort of like an improv class, you know, it's always going to have to be like a yes, and right? Yes. And, 
you know, we can get this going for you as soon as we can uh, submit your application. You know, yes, of course, you know, I, I know that, you know, it takes about six months to get the service that you need. But there's also, you know, this service to take, you know, whatever it is, you know, anytime an objection arises, you just have to professionally just dance or not dance around it. But um, you have to uh, make sure that you do, you know, tackle that objection. You do acknowledge it. And then you just, you know, make sure that you just give a good answer that is not too pushy, is not too weird either, where they're like, wait, what? I, I thought you were saying that um, I could do that or I can, you know, go to this doctor or I can, you know, whatever it is, right? Uh, it's your job to be like, yeah, yeah. So, yes. So what we can do is, yeah, you can definitely go to that doctor. Um, I definitely want to keep you your options open with this plan to get you to other doctors or I know you mentioned that you wanted to get better coverage for medication or something like that or whatever the misunderstanding of if they're if you if they even seem confused at all i would say that's even an objection in itself so you should be clarifying any misunderstandings uh, and then provide additional information after the fact to alleviate those concerns right so handle objections gracefully um, if you don't, you know, and then you handle the objection a little too weird, it's going to sort of turn clients off. And then, you know, that just, you know, this dismantles a whole 20, 30, 40 minute conversation you've already been having. Um, so another huge thing that I think has been <laughs> probably the best thing or not the best thing, but probably the the biggest tool in my tool build, the biggest tool in my arsenal that I always use is assuming the sale. I assume sales, right? I mean, if you're working with me, a Cadillac agency, a tier one agency, right? I've paid my dues. I've done great things uh, for my clients. You know, my, my, I have a pretty good reputation with clients and agents. You know, uh, I'm good for the industry. You know, what I do is good for the client. It's good for the economy. It's good for everybody, right? Um, I assume the sale because... I'm just that confident and you have to have this confidence to make sales, right? If you don't assume the sale and you, you put a cliffhanger in there saying, do you want this now or should we just get this later for you? You're not making sales, right? You're, you're, you're just tiptoeing around things and then yet now you have to call them back. The buying temperature lowers. You don't want to be in a, you don't want to be in that situation, obviously. So you definitely want to assume the sale, right? Sometimes assuming the sale can be, you know, certain situations. It can, you know, it can just be you confidently guiding the client uh, from, you know, a, a portion of the buying process that they were at and then getting him to another portion, just saying when using words like this, when you get your new cards or when your policy kicks in on the first or um, when, you know, when you have your brochures, when your doctor's delegated, when, you know, you already have the policy that we're talking about right now. Um, you know, when you use words like that, then, you know, it's going to subconsciously in their brains say, hey, OK, yeah, I'm, I'm gravitating towards decision. It's like a magnet, right? Like you're sort of like, oh, OK, OK, I think I'm going to do this. Right. So that's what's going on in their head. So assuming the sale is huge. I mean, that's one of my favorite things to do, because, again, this has to be done with confidence and confidence comes with reps and reps come with you actually taking action, right? So um, assume the sale, always assume the sale. And um, trust me, 60% of the times when you assume the sale, um, then not, I would say you'd probably get the deal. I mean, that's just me, but um, assume the sale. Um, again, you can also, you know, offer incentives if it's gonna be legitimate, right? Don't do any of those um, weird flex card things if it's not warranted, if they don't actually deserve it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can provide other additional incentives such as, you know, um, whatever it is, you know, if you're following up with your client, you know, and uh, you know, even if it's not monetary, just something that you can do to say thank you to them, you know, maybe do like a thank you kind of like pizza party here, like for your beneficiaries or something like that. Just, um, something that's going to offer incentives for them to, to not only, you know, go with you, but stay with you as a client. Um, I think that's gonna um, do a lot. That's gonna do a lot for your business as well too. Now, the actual art of closing the deal, okay? So finally, uh, I mean, 
here's here, here's something that I've been seeing, right? Um, a lot of people are scared to ask, right? Ask for the business, right? And it's just, it's still mind blowing to me because, you know, yes, you can assume the sale, but you still, it, you know, unless it's so assumed and then you just go into, okay, cool. What's your name and birthday? What's the address you want the car sent out to? Um, if you're not there yet, you still have to close the deal, right? So, you know, the, the you as a salesperson, you should definitely ask directly and clearly and it should be some kind of closing questions, right? Um, and it often, often requires conviction and confidence. You know, mo the, the last four or five points that I've made is going to have to have conviction, confidence, competence, everything in between to execute the close, right? The close is, you know, the final chapter. This is you know, where where people are made and or people are broken, right? So make sure that you're asking for the business. You're asking them, hey, okay, so definitely happy to happy, uh, help you with this. Um, you know, do something to assume the sale first. Like, okay, so what what, what address did you want the cards and brochure sent out with uh, to? And then, you know, they'll give you the address or whatever. But, you know, um, it really takes a real salesperson to sort of navigate those questions that might come in between you closing uh, because they're like, wait, so again, how much is that again? And then you sort of just have to circle back to that objection and then, of course, acknowledge it, answer the question and then get right back to the close. Does that sound good? OK, got it. OK, so let's move on. So again, what was the address you wanted this cards and brochure sent out to? Right. You're, you're going to keep closing and your job is to keep closing. You know, because here, here's the reason why you've already given them all the information that they need. Right. You've given them emails. You've give they, they've already talked to their wives. Right. Or, or their, sorry, their wife. Um, <laughs> um, they've already talked to whoever they need to talk to. Right. What else is left? You know, and a lot of people are, are sort of scared to be in a situation to ask, um, you know, for the business, even though they're in a situation where there's nothing else to talk about. Like sometimes a client has to be like, OK, so what are the next steps? Right. Because the agent was not closing. But thank God you got them there because at the very least, the client's asking you, hey, let's do this. Right. But it's always your job to be like, OK, great. Yeah. So the cards and brochures are going to take about two weeks. Um, what's the name that you want to appear on your cards? Right. You're going to assume the sale slash close the sale at the same time. And then if you do get some kind of objection, then circle back to that objection and then definitely acknowledge it, like I mentioned, and then keep going, coming back to the close and then try keep doing the close no matter how annoying it is. Keep closing. Keep asking questions. Sometimes you can make it different into different questions like, yeah, so yeah, that, that's going to be the situation. So yeah, happy to help out with that. Of course, if you have any questions moving forward, I'm going to be your agent. So just a little reassurance, right? I'm going to be your agent. So um, what's the name that you wanted to appear on the cards? You know, keep circling back and then go right back to the close, just like I'm doing right now. And then they're like, okay, so wait, wait, Andrew, you told me that it's going to be, you know, 200 something, you know, for the premium. And then, you know, um, and that's just by myself too. And it's like, yeah, that's just you. It's like, oh, I thought we added our husband. It's like, um, yeah, I can quickly quote, quote you with your husband. Boom, boom, boom. Does that sound good? It's like, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can, we can do that. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You go back to the close. <laughs> you keep going back to the close. And you say, okay, great. So um, what's, okay, so I'm going to need both of your names now. You know, whatever the, the objection is, that wasn't the best objection, but you know, whatever you have to do, always go back to whatever question they're asking, you know, acknowledge that and then say, does that sound good or have some kind of tie down question and then go back to the close and then keep repeating until you get the results that you want. Right. So that is in a nutshell how you close. Um, there are, you know, probably certain specific steps that um, I'm, I'm maybe missing. But then again, guys, this is just a a quick, you know, rant about, you know, sort of how I close. And of course, you know, without getting too deep into the, you know, the utmost like psychology of, you know, how closing works, um, you know, hopefully this video helped with that and just, just follow those steps. And again, guys, be assertive, right? Be, create a certain sense of urgency, assume the sale, 
and close the damn deal. Close the damn deal. People. So what I have noticed is a lot of people are so scared to close, and it's it's their it's their kryptonite, and just people they just you know people are just like not in in a situation to, you know, close even though the the, the presentation was so was good and you know they're so confident in their presentation but come close to closing time um it's a little bit shaky so i just wanted to make this video to let you guys know close your deals ask for the deals never ever leave a presentation without asking one for the deal all right guys i'm gonna sign off and i'll see you guys at the next one thank you